My dad's name was Joseph De Palma Jr. He began his career with the NYPD in January of 1983. As a rookie, he went on to the 106 precinct in Queens. In 1986, he joined the Queens Task Force Bureau. In 1995, one year before I was born, he worked as a crime prevention specialist. He retired in January of 2001. Nine years and three months later, my father committed suicide. This came as a shock to my family, but unfortunately, hundreds of families know this all too well. This is The Forgotten Blue Line. The New York City Police Department was established in 1845. It is one of the largest and oldest municipal police departments in the United States. But with about 36,000 officers and 18,000 civilian employees, they oversee an 8.5 million person city. Steve Cairo was a former lieutenant in the New York City Police Department from 1979 to 2002. He was also a good friend of my dad's. Police Department was a great organization. I really enjoyed my time, 22 and a half years. Um, the friendships that I made, your dad, Ernie, all my friends, Dave, uh, that culture, I, I wouldn't want to trade it for anything. All the people that I met and the friends I made, it was the best experience in my life. Ernie Nespreto was a former NYPD captain and from 1981 to 2001. He knew my dad too, but he had a bit of a different outlook. There were some very good moments, some very bad moments. Uh, I'll do the two extremes. Um, really bad moment was I was in the precinct, the 103rd precinct, uh, when police officer Eddie Byrne was assassinated. I used the word assassinated as opposed to killed. Cops are killed in a line of duty. Unfortunate realities, it happens every day somewhere in the country, some cop gets killed in a line of duty. Uh, if not every day, then every other day. And anything from a car accident, you know, responding to something, you know, unlike television, those police cars are not tanks. You know, if you have an accident, responding some way, you'll get killed like everybody else. After an event like this, you would think it would be scarring. But Nasprato said something that I didn't expect. You don't think about it. You just don't. Mm -hmm. every, every time you go to work, you know, it could be my last day. Cop realizes that and, and, it, and gets immune to it. Doesn't even think about it. Cops don't think that way. Mm -hmm. Their families do, not the cops. Their families do, but not the cops. Ernie, Steve, and my dad joined the NYPD when crime rates were at an all-time high. And so I asked if something tragic happened. Was there a debrief after? Now, yes. Then, no. But the fear to go speak to someone was evident. They used to call them the rubber gun squad, mm -hmm. you know, anybody that had, had their gun taken for whatever reason. Yeah, they just kind of, you know. They, we didn't look at those officers uh, the, same way. the same way. Yeah, so, so there was some, some type of stigma. According to a study by the Rudiman Family Foundation, in 2017, 129 officers across the nation were killed in the line of duty while 140 active police officers committed suicide. In the year of 2018 alone, from what we know, three active NYPD officers have committed suicide. Kristen and Mary Hawkins saw that fear firsthand as her brother, NYPD Inspector Michael and Mary, a member for 23 years, committed suicide in May of 2016. He was, um, he was young and successful and he was caring and he just loved life, he loved his job, he loved the NYPD, he gave his life for the NYPD, and um, he wouldn't have done anything for anybody. I think my brother was afraid to go to anybody to tell them he was feeling that bad because he was afraid they would put a blemish on his reputation, they would maybe take him off, you know, his position and put him on desk duty, take away his gun, because they thought maybe he was mentally having some kind of a meltdown, which maybe he was, but mm -hmm. he would have never reached out for help because of his, he didn't want to ruin his own reputation and what people would think of him and his position. So he never reached out for help. And so I wondered, was my father the same way? Did he fear that seeking help would ruin his reputation? After years of service helping so many, who was there to help him? The answer to that question may have been Papa, police organization providing peer assistance. In 1996, a group of police officers decided that more needed to be done, and so Papa created an arrangement with the NYPD to access police officers who may be in need of help. John Petrullo, a retired NYPD officer, serves as the director. 
He oversees the Resiliency Support Program, Retiree Program, Military Program for returning NYPD officers from active duty, training programs, trauma response team, and he hopes to pay it forward. Uh, prior to that, I've had some incidents that, you know, if I could take my experience and use it to help somebody else, that's what I wanted to do. And then when I found out about Papa, for me, it was a no-brainer to get involved. And through my experiences, being able to help somebody else. The main part of our service is that hotline. That's the foundation of what we do. Uh, so that's the main operational uh, component of Papa. The police officer calls the phone. As we say, once you're a cop, you're always a cop. You can retire from the department, but you still have, have the police blood in, you, in your veins. That's it. It's, it's something that, that you just don't walk away from. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, there, there is that bond. And it's also uh, one of the hurdles is that with that bond, nobody else understands what you may have gone through. And that's what we believe in our, in our thoughts, that nobody would understand. And, and there are many people that would, uh, which is why we've created that segue to get them into help that no we have people trained that that get what you go through they have an understanding of it mm -hmm. and that whole brotherhood of you know I can talk to you I feel safe that's why they feel comfortable with a peer because you know what it's like to be on this job the average person doesn't at a time in my dad's life where he felt misunderstood did he know about Papa with over 36,000 active NYPD officers and thousands upon thousands retired NYPD officers, Papa only receives less than 1,000 calls a year. Now, eight years without my dad, I wish that he was one of those calls. If you or someone you know are an NYPD officer who are struggling, please call 1-888-COPS-COPS. -COPS.